Ryan, why don't you, uh, I'd love for you to introduce yourself, please. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you're doing because you have a lot of things on the go and then we'll move forward with the list. Yeah, um, Dr. Ryan Court. I'm an optometrist in the uh, Charlotte, North Carolina area. And I mean, really at the end of the day, I look at myself as, a, you know, hardworking man that wants to support his family and, and do good in his community and help others. Yeah. So, you know, uh, two location um, practice in, in North Charlotte. I work on a health and wellness website um, that I co or that I founded, Intro Wellness. Uh, so, you know, patient education topics, you know, reviews on products and services in the health and wellness space, and then the comparisons. And, um, you know, outside of that, just doing a little odds and ends, some consulting, hang, you know, trying to hang out with friends and family. And, you know, obviously a lot of family time right now. We'll get into yeah, that. But yeah. um, that's really it. the nuts and bolts of it, man. I live, live in the Sweet. States. And I know that you are up in good old Vancouver living the dream. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Living somebody's dream. I don't know who's it might be. <laughs> uh, awesome, man. Well, thank you for that introduction. So thanks for uh, having me. Yeah, my my pleasure. Honestly, uh, this is the third third IG live we're doing together. Um, but uh, you know, I saw that um, you had written this article on LinkedIn, and I loved it. And it's gotten quite a bit of traction because Luxotica featured it on their in their newsletter as well. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. They. Yeah. Um... They reached out to me, I, you know, and just said, "Hey, you know, you came up with this list, and I think a lot of our our doctors would find value in it. And you know, what do you think about us just going ahead and, and sharing it?" And I said, "Absolutely." And that that was really the the goal in mind was to share this topic and this list of ideas to people that I was sitting there creating the list for myself. Right as mm. soon as we, I kind of knew I was gonna be hunkered down uh, mm. for an unspecified period of time. I'm I'm somebody that's always got those wheels turning. I want to I mean, stay busy, you yeah. know, and just like you. Yeah, but uh, you know what is, uh, you, you and I are very similar on that front, but you are way ahead of me in the sense that if you know Ryan, you know that he likes to prepare and make lists and do, uh, what do you, <laughs> a, a, a plan, 90 day plan or whatever, however many months plan uh, you, you like to plan, which is amazing. And that's, I guess, the, the impetus for this list. Um, and uh, so again, we're talking about the 15 things. Now, the article says the 15 things optometrists and non-essential providers can do during the coronavirus pandemic. But really, when I l read it, I felt like uh, anybody could take advantage of this list and really benefit from it, especially business owners, not just optometrists, but other business owners in other industries. So that's why I thought uh, this list was going to be so amazing to share with so many people. So uh, why don't we jump in? Um, do you want to do you want to go through it or shall I just ask? Should I? name it and then you kind of give me your your spiel on each point yeah we can kind of go back and forth whatever you want okay. i mean you got the list in front of you uh and yeah. since you have you know a good setup there why not um, absolutely for me beautiful so number one volunteer in your community tell me your thoughts on that yeah so this is one that i think you know obviously and and, and one thing real quickly the non-essential part of that title mm. is because right now our work is to be social distancing unless it's an emergency and i emergency right so Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. There are certain emergencies and certain pandemics that you know come into play where we may be an essential provider in those in those situations and in, the, and in those instances. So, when it comes to volunteering right now, helping out others in your local community. So, if you mm -hmm. have uh, friends, family members, people that maybe have autoimmune conditions or at high risk, um, you know, above a specific age, helping them out a little bit in regards to just getting groceries or takeout or you know things that won't harm them, right, and will harm you. Um, but helping on the community that way, there are a lot of different food banks, blood drives, um, donation centers, things like that that are going on that at the end of the day, we can be valuable assets if we're just sitting in our house and not doing anything, right? We can mm -hmm. help out in those ways. And then if things really got, you know, things escalated and things got really crazy, in my opinion, they, these hospitals would rather have people with healthcare knowledge helping out, maybe whether it's, you know, on mm -hmm. intake side, taking blood pressure, things like that. Mm -hmm. if need be. And so that mm -hmm. was really my thought process on that. What do you That's think about excellent. that? I love that. I love that. Volunteering. Yeah, you know, I think it, this is a different type of volunteering. It's not the, you know, um, the type that we would normally consider. You know, it's more helping your community. Like you said, people who are more at risk. Obviously, elderly population is the first one that comes to mind. Uh, I went to the grocery store the other day, uh, the big one near my house, and I had to wait outside because it was a limited number of people I could go in at any particular time. We were yeah. outside for 45 minutes to an hour. You know, yeah. that's tough, tough for people with disabilities and other things. So if possible, um, please, you know, look into those kinds of uh, things if you can. Obviously, keeping your distance and doing everything that you need to do to help 
um, keep this thing at bay, but but helping out where you can for sure. Uh, I want to say a real quick shout out, Doctor um, Doctor Gold here. Thank you for joining, <laughs> Doctor Glover. Gonna, thank you for joining. We have some presidential nominations. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Prime minister nominations. Uh, Vishal, what's up, everybody? Thank you so much. And uh, before we go on, it's Friday evening, so please join us. Cheers. Let me know what you're drinking if you are having Cheers. a drink. <laughs> Cheers. Uh, and a reminder, if you do have any comments, please feel free to drop your comments. But if you have a question, use that little question mark box on the bottom and, uh, and let me know if you have any questions. We'll be happy to entertain those as long as we go as well. So number two, this one obviously uh, comes close to my heart. Number two is build a brand, build your personal brand. Um, I'm going to let you, Ryan, I'm going to let you do your, your thing and I'll chime in, obviously. My thing is your thing, right? Because you and I had a podcast, <laughs> not a yeah. podcast, just a video chat back in the day, an IG Live, going into this topic at length. Uh, I think we both shared it on Instagram, uh, on YouTube, mm -hmm. um, but really setting up the structure of having a professional brand online. So having your doctor profiles, your optometry profiles, your community profiles, whatever you want it to be, um, you know, putting those things together on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, you name it. And then also really highlighting goals that you want to achieve by doing so. And then putting together a content strategy and actually doing it. Yeah. And consistency is key. And how many days in a row did you post on on Instagram <laughs> stories? I mean, this is the king of consistency right here. I can yeah, tell you, thanks. mine comes with ebb and flow. I got to be honest, but yeah. you are the king of consistency. And I think you can uh, teach us all a lesson on that. Well, thank you. Thank you. I, you know what? That was, um, it, was a, it was an experiment. Let's put it that way. And I started with the 30 days, but it went to a little over 100 right. in a row. And, and, and you had was, a baby on the way. You, had the, yeah. you guys had the baby. We had going. the baby. Yeah, that was, you know, Mahi was born in, in, at the end of August. <laughs> I think I stopped sort of like a week or so after that. It was about a 100-day wow. mark. But, um, but you know what? It's, it's interesting. I was chatting with uh, Dr. Lily um, just this morning. And <laughs> thanks. Uh, thanks, Solomon. Um, I was chatting with Lily, uh, laying this, this morning about it. And I was just, you know, we're talking about branding and and one of those things, like you said, is consistency. It's not just consistency in posting every single day. I, I don't have a specific frequency that I think you should be posting at, but posting across three or four platforms and posting sort of that consistent message across all of them is really important. And uh, there she is. And um, what I was saying was, you know, if you, if you have a platform that you, you think could be helpful or, or useful to you in your particular area, but you haven't really tapped into it, and in, in, our, in our particular conversation this morning, it was LinkedIn. Um, I was saying just start, you know, just maybe re reactivate your account, add the app yeah. on your phone, right, and, and take some time to just kind of dabble a little bit there. And after a little while, it becomes more uh, regular. And then that posting 100 days in a row was more experimental for me. I tried to test what worked and what didn't. Um, but if I can really quick, I was just going to share my three things that I, I kind of harp on all the time, what I call my three pillars. Number one is uh, if you are working on branding, number one is um, – uh, provide value, always number one. Think of it from that perspective. Number two, um, I'm forgetting my own uh, my own pillars here. Number <laughs> you two can skip is two and go to three. <laughs> no, no, no. Engage, engage with your audience, and that that means if somebody comments on your post, obviously you respond. But actually, go out there, search some hashtags that are in your area, in your ex area of expertise, and start commenting on certain people's posts and engaging. And then number three is that consistency that we just talked about. Yeah, too Absolutely. many drinks. Thanks, Daryl. I barely nah, got a couple. It's five o'clock over there. Oh, I mean, yeah, I it's guess only it's five o'clock day, though, right? So who yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So number two is build your brand. Number three, evaluate your external marketing strategy. So go ahead, Ryan. Yeah. I mean, well, internal marketing and external marketing, but honestly, I think of internal marketing as is actually implementing something within the office. You know, ROI and and uh, you know, investing towards the patient base you have already captured. Uh, external marketing can kind of a little bit, you know, you can kind of blend it into that internal marketing strategy, but looking at what you're doing to bring in that new patient, whether you're doing it online, whether you're doing it face to face, um, you know, there are a lot of ways to drive traffic to your office, right? Mm -hmm. um, me in particular, I like to get out in the community like you, Harbier. I like to, you know, shake hands, meet new people, go to networking events, uh, go out to primary care offices, drop off you know, diabetic report letters, you know, samples of that, give information on how to make a referral effectively, you know, just let these providers know what we do and how we can provide value to them and their patient base. Mm -hmm. And, um, 
you know, there are just so many different ways to really tap into and reevaluate and take care of Dr. Daryl Glover, enjoy the daddy time. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there's, there's so many different ways that we can really capitalize on what are we doing effectively and evaluating what we aren't doing as well. So coming back and taking a look at that uh, is super important for us, especially because we now have time that we didn't have in the past, right? We, we can't make excuses anymore. Time has essentially stopped when it comes to professionalism and uh, going and, and actually seeing patients and providing care. Uh, a lot of people's day-to-day -day operations have halted completely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I liked your, you know, the, the call to action here, get your practice on social media and draw up a content strategy, bonus points. If you're able to put together an email or text message campaign to communicate with your patients, I yes. wrote that down for myself. So that was yeah, awesome. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, yeah. in the social media of, of building a brand personally, you also want to do that for your practice. Capitalize on those things. Make sure you have profiles across the board. Google My Business is huge. Mm -hmm. um, Yelp for Business for areas that are practices that get a lot of Yelp reviews. And, and obviously just communicating via email. So we send out email blasts about contact lens sales and letting mm. patients know we're here to support them. And, and, and um, we're looking at doing some more. And yep. uh, it's just, you know, getting the, those things in place for when we do want to get the ball rolling, right? Yep. So when we do know that, hey, like in two weeks, we're going to open, start those, start those constant lines of communication. Yeah. And again, that, that's, that's valuable. You know, this is coming from an optometrist, but I think more importantly, this is coming from a business owner. Yeah. Uh, and that is something that any business right now that had to close their doors, email, like we, I had this uh, uh, IG live just a few days ago with Kat Elizabeth, who's a branding expert. And her number one thing to this day still is building an email list. You know, you think, oh, we're in social media now that there's going to be something different. That's more important. But for all of us, you know, collecting email addresses, not just for marketing purposes, but just for c continuing communication, I think is fantastic. So whichever business you're in, whichever industry you're in. Um, I, we have a question here. I wanted to just see if we can quickly address this one. Yeah. So here it is. Do you see patients or recommend seeing medical eye exams during this challenge? Now, this is not specifically <clears throat> related to our, well, I guess it is a little bit related to our topic of conversation. Uh, I, we personally, uh, I, we closed our office um, and we decided not to because we didn't feel like we were going to have a lot of people coming through. However, I know what I did instead was uh, I have a list of, of colleagues that I know are open in different areas. So when somebody calls us, if I can't do it via telecommunication, which we're going to maybe talk a little bit about later, um, then I will refer them to a colleague who's open. How about you? Echo, echo exactly what you're saying right there. Uh, do not have the ability to go and, and see the patients face to face right now. Mm -hmm. um, just due to the current structure of, you know, working at subleases uh, inside of malls and both malls are mm -hmm. closed. Okay. And so telemedicine and, or like you said, letting them know about colleagues in the area that, that are able to take care mm -hmm. of the situation. Yeah. So, no primary care, no, you know, comprehensive care at this time. Yep. Uh, number four on the list of 15 things that we can do to stay productive. Number four, revisit your practice website. Woo. This one I've been dialing in on, honestly. So <laughs> nice. I've had so many things that I've wanted to optimize on our website and, you know, revamping just the, you know, the user interface and the user experience. So when people land on the website, whether it's on desktop or mobile, uh, making sure it's a clean, uh, user-friendly experience, having uh, specific links throughout the website that maybe, you know, feature a blog post or, you know, a page that it was optimized on a specific service or per specific product, um, all of this, if you look at, you know, the vast spectrum of websites in eye care, most people don't manage their website, but they may have the ability to have access to it. Mm -hmm. And now is the time to truly learn these skills because when you are able to control what is on your own website over time, you can definitely drive more traffic through search engine optimization and you can increase your click through to schedule an exam or give you a call or order contacts, you know, whatever it may be. And so this is a huge one for people because mm -hmm. a lot of people just let their website sit out there and, just, just like a headshot, right? Over time, yeah. uh, we forget to update our headshots. I think the one yeah. you use is a couple of years old, you know? I mean, it's yeah. like, it, it yeah. just takes time, so. Yeah, for sure. Uh, How about you? Know you? Um, I, I'm with you. So I actually, so I, I didn't design uh, our website, but we have it on a very easy platform. Both of our websites are on Squarespace. Oh, and perfect. so they're, they're very easy, plug and play, kind of drag and drop, however you want to phrase it. Um, so I, I, I'm the one who's usually... And this is going to, um, you know, if you go in and check my website out, you'll see. But I'm the one who's usually doing the edits. So you'll see that it's a little behind and that's because I haven't been doing it. But, um, but you, know, I, you know, again, the call to action I love because it, it's, it's always small steps. Sometimes when, I, when you say something like revisit your practice website, 
it might feel a little overwhelming for some people, but your 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 the call to action here is perfect. Spend thirty minutes browsing your your practice website and write down areas that need improvement. Simple. Yeah. You start somewhere, write it down when you know what needs to change. Uh, and, and if you don't have any any uh, expertise in that and you don't feel like you're comfortable doing it, then maybe next step is to find somebody or call the person who created the website and maybe ask some questions or YouTube it or, or whatever. You know, there's so many resources online, but that's excellent. Another thing and to it, consider too is if you have a team member that's maybe still on the payroll and, and they're helping out with other, you know, things. Um, and if they have that technical knowledge, just giving them your, your feedback, your 30 minutes, uh, you know, a couple of times and having them go ahead and make the changes and then you come back and take a look. Yeah. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. So number six on the list of 15 things that we can all be doing to stay pro, uh, productive. Number six, chip away at your accounts receivable. Mm. Business oh, yeah. owners. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. And, and I got to be fully transparent. My, my business partner, Dr. Rachel Rubel, is, uh, she's a guru when it comes to insurance and accounts receivable and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And we have some team members that we've trained to help uh, try to kind of continue to chip away at that over time. Mm -hmm. So I defer to Rachel. <laughs> Rachel, are you here? <laughs> Rachel. Nah, uh, Rachel. Rachel's, Rachel's probably full mommy mode running around with her kiddos or at a neighborhood uh, social distancing function. But uh, yeah, yeah I, been... defer, I defer to her. How about you? Are you, are you in charge of that? or is that, I defer uh, to my business partner or... as well. <laughs> Do you really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's so, funny. Hey, Harley, here, we Harley got a lot is... in common and it's just another <laughs> yeah, one on the list, my man. Chalk it up. 100%. You know, when I saw that, I was like, oh, my head started hurting just from reading that sentence. Um, you no, know, but honestly, Harleen is, uh, my business partner is, is, is fantastic with this kind of stuff. And uh, sometimes, unfortunately, that makes me a little complacent. I should be a little better at it. But um, it's something that we, we stay on top of. We do have a staff member in the office right now, just a few hours a day, just doing admin stuff and this kind of stuff yeah. right now. So, so we're helping it kind of take care of that. Uh, before we move forward, I want to really quickly uh, just reiterate, sorry for the people who've been on the call since the beginning, um, I'm repeating myself, but please feel free to leave comments. We, we welcome, we invite, we encourage comments and questions. There is a little question box on the very bottom of the screen. Uh, if you have a question, leave it there because then it prompts me and I see it for sure versus some comments kind of get lost in the scroll. And uh, it's Friday evening, so if you don't mind, join us for a little drink. Cheers. Cheers. And uh, let me know what you're having. Hopefully it's something tasty. <laughs> All right, on to the next one. Number seven out of the 15 things that we can do to stay productive, evaluate your payment options. Please elaborate. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of us kind of, um, as soon as we heard that we were unable to see patients anymore, we know kind of that the well does run dry, right? Because mm -hmm. what really fuels the life brought of our practice is people and patient care mm -hmm. and providing services and products within our realm of business and this goes to any business owner, anybody who's helping out people on a day-to-day -day basis. If you don't have any patients, any clients, any customers, it gets a little bit dicey, right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. as money stops kind of coming in the pipeline, you want to evaluate things that you can go ahead and defer, uh, if at all possible, as yep. you make these challenging decisions. And so um, a couple of nice ones out there. I know um, student loans are deferred. I wrote in the article, it's two months in the United States. It's, I think it's now with this new stimulus package, going to be up to six months with no mm -hmm. interest, um, which is really nice. And mm -hmm. um, I see a lot of people that are reaching out to different companies maybe that have purchased equipment through, or they're talking mm -hmm. to their landlord, or they're talking to their, you know, whoever they're leasing the building from. Um, they're just trying to find ways to kind of defer making payments on things that if at all possible, yep. and if there's any flexibility. And so to me, that if you have money that stops coming in, you want to take the money you have in your bank account and make sure you don't let it just go straight out the window right away. And so yep. that's kind of like crisis management, in my opinion. Yep. And I think that there's been a lot of industry partners and a lot of people in our communities that have been very flexible about this. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, Dr. Adam Ramsey actually just had a little video, I think yesterday, day before. I don't know if you saw it, but yeah. his video was good too. He's, I like him. He's right, right to the point. Adam cracks uh, me up, man. He's funny. <laughs> but, but it was a similar thing. Like, what is the number one thing you got to do? You start calling people, people who you, who you owe money to, right? Just make sure, see if you can get things deferred. And, and we did the same thing. Yeah. We called um, frame vendors or, you know, whatever leases we might have for equipment and Visa and whoever else just to see what we can get. Uh, landlord, obviously, for rent. Um, everything, everything helps right now when you, when you don't know. We just don't know um, how long this is going to be. So Nobody has a specific answer to when things will be normal again, yeah. right? Yeah. And when it will be safe to provide care. So Exactly. A big one. Uh, 
Question here from Dr. Devinder Sidhu. What are you gentlemen drinking? Little Angel's Envy right here. So cheers to that, right? That's, that's what I'm sipping on. Look at oh, boy. I have, I have the bottle sitting here, but I don't plan to refill. I just was in a, in a rush to, so I just brought it with me and I poured I it. Think right the, I think the answer he was looking, I think the answer or response he was looking for was, was that full before this, this talk? Oh, yeah, right? yeah. It started. <laughs> <laughs> no, that one I keep for, uh, for certain occasions most of the time. This was a special occasion. I thought I'd just have a sip of a nice one. All right. Um, so, number eight on the list of 15 things we can do to stay productive maximize gift card and contact lens sales yeah so things that we can do remotely right so um you know gift cards are a beautiful thing they can be utilized towards products and services so obviously you know if somebody doesn't have any kind of uh you know vision or medical insurance to utilize towards the exams you know your exam fees they can utilize a gift card if they want to go ahead and maybe put some money towards a pair of glasses that they can purchase down the road they can, you know, utilize a gift card. And I know a lot of people are doing this for small businesses. Mm -hmm. So restaurants and um, retail businesses, places where they physically, uh, they can't go in, you know, mm -hmm. uh, restaurants for sure. I think restaurants are the big one uh, mm -hmm. outside of just going and getting takeout. It, it's been a very viable thing to keep a lot of businesses afloat. And then mm -hmm. contact lens sales, you know, talking to these patients that have active prescriptions and maybe you're coming up on, uh, maybe they made a three, six month order and, um, you know, they haven't called back or maybe they're, they have a year supply and they're coming up at the end of the road. I know that we actually extended, we gave the opportunity for patients to extend their prescription a month or two mm -hmm. that we physically can't see. Like we right. can't penalize people when we can't see them. Yeah. So we, we pulled out information from our electronic medical record system, sent an email out to them, let them know we're there for them. And we understand how frustrating it can be in a pandemic to not be able to see. Yeah. And so why don't you go ahead and, and just make a you know purchase to get you by until we can get you in. Yeah. And so that's the big picture on that, you know. Um, what do you think about that? Have you utilized that strategy? Have you yeah. uh, reached uh, I, out to your patient base? I, I love this. You know what? We've been, um, we've been encouraging people to, to continue to keep ordering contact lenses, you know, and there have been calls coming in, emails coming in. And uh, as I said, we have a staff member in the office for a few hours most days of the week. And um, so she's able to process a lot of stuff, like, pretty quickly, actually. And then um, yeah. uh, she's in there by herself, right? So we're not worried about her interacting with others and we're, we don't have to worry about the social distancing as much there but um all contact lens companies ha are doing free shipping direct to patient no matter what the quantity of contacts so we're we're letting people know you want to just buy one box go ahead you know it's going to come straight to your house and a quick um, thank you too to to those those companies right yeah i mean the big sure. four have been fantastic when it comes to supporting us from that perspective because that is huge Absolutely. It's truly, truly helpful. Um, and patients, of course, like you said, obviously, vision is very important. And although we're encouraging patients to try to wear their glasses more anyway. Uh, sure. But if you want to continue wearing contacts, of course, we're happy to, to keep um, uh, ordering them and mailing them. Now, uh, the gift card thing, I think, is an amazing idea. And as I was saying, I loved your the, the previous um, point about email. So I'm actually planning setting something up. I'm going to email all our patients next week to remind them that they can order contacts. And, but I think we're going to also offer some form of a gift card at some kind of discounted rate yeah. uh, to encourage people that, you know, uh, that way we have a little bit of revenue coming in. Of course, they can cash in on that uh, whenever we are open again. So you could even take the price of your exam and then, you know, discount the cash pay price. And then, you know, a lot of people are already discounted already, but maybe throw in a little additional discount if they go ahead and support you right now. Yeah. And so, um, and the other thing about gift cards is at the end, of, you know, if, if you give it a finite time period, they have to come in and utilize it. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, obviously you want to honor the gift card, but the finite time period kind of brings them into the office, you know? For sure. For sure. Uh, sorry. Instagram's being a little funny here. A couple of questions before we move on to the next, uh, next one here. Um, let's get Lily up here. How are you taking payments for sales, um, sales or gift cards remotely? Are, are you doing anything right now, Ryan? So we have um, our merchant service, Total Merchant Services. We have the ability to go ahead and just take down the information. And um, there's a, they send us a PDF document. And so we take it over the phone um, or they email it over to us. And then we call it into the system. And, and that's kind of how we utilize it right now. Um, I think that different companies have different things structured and set up. So it just depends on what you have set up in your office. You want to reach out to whoever is your merchant service provider and, um, and kind of go from there. Got it. Um, we, as I've said already, we have, um, 
a staff member going into the office. So we're just processing everything through our normal merchant services. Hey. But, um, but it, there's a lot of online options like Square and other stuff like that that you can easily set up um, an account and, and link it to your bank account without ever having to leave your house. Um, and everything kind of processes and you create your official invoices, everything that you need to do. So yeah, that's an good option. point. If, if, if what you currently have doesn't have that opportunity you know, for you to kind of maximize things, then yeah, go ahead and set something up and then cancel when you have to down the road or keep it open if it doesn't cost you money to keep it open. Yeah, it's, it doesn't, I don't think there's necessarily a cost to keep it open, but um, the fee, the transaction is, is yeah. higher, right? I think Square is something like 4% or something. So it's quite a bit it's, higher than yeah. what your, your standard is. But at this time, you know, if it means you're going to bring a revenue in, it's worth it. If it's, if it's keeping the doors open, you know, if, if it's keeping the business open, right? That's really mm -hmm. what it comes down to. Right now, our doors not are open, right? But if it keeps the business alive. Keeps money yes. coming in. Absolutely. Yes. And of course, to, to there, there's, there's a limit to how far you're going to go with that. But at the same time, you know, a couple of percent off the top is not going to hurt us right now if it means more revenue coming in. So worth it. Not at all. Not at all. Um, so... Uh, just a, a quick recap of what we're, we're talking about for the new uh, members in the audience. Thank you for joining us. We are going over Dr. Ryan Court's list of 15 things that we can do to stay productive during this outbreak uh, coronavirus pandemic. And I'll quickly recap the points we've gone over so far. Number one, volunteer in your community. Number two, build a personal brand. Number three, evaluate your external marketing strategy. Number four, Revisit your practice website. Number five. Oh, I think we skipped number five. We're going to go back to number five here. Uh, number Good six. Good thing you went over it. <laughs> yeah. Chip away at your accounts receivable. Number seven. Evaluate payment options. Number eight. Uh, maximize gift card and contact lens sales. So we just finished that one. Let's go back to number five because I think this one's very important. Yeah. Use video calls to stay connected. So yeah. Run. So I'm actually, what we're doing it right now. Number yeah, we're one. doing it's it right good now. To, it's good to yeah. see you, buddy. Uh, but I've already done four or five of these, you know, whether it's, you know, FaceTime um, that I do with my family all the time. But we actually did the Zoom with, with my entire family. So not just a one on one. Nice. Yeah. And uh, that was fun. I did a Zoom with um, the co-residents that I did residency with. And I haven't we haven't all been together um, physically. So it was yeah. really cool just to have us together virtually where we could all communicate since residency. Yeah. And we're talking 2013 is when we finished up. Um, had one for the Bosch and Lom, uh, contact lens, uh, you know, educators team. Mm -hmm. And, um, we had a, one with just some, some people locally that we typically could just hang out. I mean, they live in our neighborhood yeah. uh, and they live in the community right here. And so that point, those points of connection are huge. And I actually even reached out to our team, um, that, you know, we, we had to unfortunately let go of a number of our team members, oh, everybody really, yeah. um, and in doing so, we said, hey, but you got an opportunity when, when things come back, uh, you know, and kind of gave them the right instructions to collect unemployment and go that route. But, you know, I wanted to reach out to them and say, hey, I'd love to connect with you guys, you know, via Zoom and just, you know, talk to each other and just see each other and, and know that we're here for you and, and let them voice their, you know, their concerns or talk about their day to day or whatever it may be. Have you had, have you utilized uh, yeah. Zoom, Skype, yeah. any of those things? Yeah, for sure. Actually, I was just saying that Lily and I chatted this morning. Um, and it's funny cause my, my in initial instinct is I'll call you, you know, but, um, uh, it's yeah. been nice that, that, uh, friends and, and colleagues have been encouraging a video because it's like, you know, instead of going for coffee, let's just uh, sit and chat face. The only problem is most of the time, um, I look kind of disheveled most of the days I'm sitting at home. I don't do my hair unless I got to do something. Right. So I'm like, my hair is all over. Um, but, um, you know, and then others, you know, uh, people, whether it's friends and family, I've been actually seeing my friends and family more than I usually do, which is funny. Um, and then others who have reached out on social media and stuff, it's kind of nice to, to meet people, you know, face to face that you might not normally have time to sit down with. So it's been pretty cool. Toss a baseball cap on, man. Just throw yeah, it on I know, backwards you're right. and jump on that. I mean, that's, it, it, I get it though, right? Unless you have yeah. something formal planned, uh, you know, right now we're kind of going through COVID life. I mean, yeah. COVID-19 is, I feel like we're in a, a snowstorm that won't go away, but wait, wait, yeah. wait, you know, it's, it's unbelievable. You know, it's like we're quarantined. <laughs> yeah, measures. no doubt. Yeah, yeah, I know. Thanks, Lily. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, Vishal, Vishal's saying I've been working on that three-point shot at home. If you've seen some of my stories, just to keep myself entertained and, and also keep my little one busy, we just put, she's got like a kid's basketball hoop. I just put it in random places and throw the ball from random or kicking I mean, in. And I mean, the sports, <laughs> all the sports cancellations is driving me nuts. I'm, yeah. a big, I'm a big college basketball guy, March mm. Madness. I was like, no. I know. I, so, so, you know, you got it, man. You got to do, you got you to find what your passion is and keep it going. 
hundred percent. Yeah, it's March sadness right now. It is. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> so number. Uh, we're gonna keep going with this list from the parking lot. Yeah. Um, uh, Fifteen things that we can do to stay productive. Number nine: implement telemedicine. Have you done this yourself? So I have implemented it. Um, my understanding is actually that you can use FaceTime and you can use uh, WhatsApp and, and the government regulations have been a little bit, you know, basically they're saying it's HIPAA compliant to this point. Um, however, I know that I care live is a huge platform. A lot of people are jumping on mm -hmm. a very robust platform um, that actually can integrate with your electronic medical record system and do a lot of cool and fancy things. So I know a lot mm -hmm. of people are looking into that. And me personally, I have jumped on uh, just doxy.me. Uh, mm -hmm. free platform just to have it set up and structured i haven't taken any telemedicine calls yet a lot mm -hmm. of emails we have a lot we, we basically put on our practice website shoot us an email and we'll go ahead and and, and we can you know triage and manage things from there phone calls to people um, yeah but nothing where i've actually had to do that yet how about you uh yeah i um same thing doxy is what i've used um i never used it before this which uh, you know something else that i've, I've kind of talked to a few people about is uh, it's a bit, you know, if we're looking for silver linings, which I think we should be doing for sure, um, you know, kind of silver lining. I learned how to use telemedicine or it's kind of cool to, to try to be able to help people yeah. from from home. Um, I had a call just before we actually we came on live here. Uh, I haven't had many, three or four, you know, but it's been nice. It's been nice and patients are truly grateful for it. Um, and at least, you know, in one case, I, I couldn't do anything. I had to triage. She had a bad corneal abrasion. So but that's better than nothing. And, uh, you know, she wasn't stuck sitting in ER. I was able to write a referral and get her over to an ophthalmologist. So uh, it was worth it. So uh, yeah. I've been doing that and, and highly recommend it. Again, it's, I think uh, there may be a little bit of hesitation because of like, maybe people are feeling a little intimidated by the idea of it. It's very, very easy. Doxy is super easy to set up. And um, yeah, it's, it's nice. You know, you don't have to do a video, but it's ideally, it's kind of nicer if you do want to see the patient's eye. And it's a freemium product, so you can easily mm -hmm. kind of, you know, you can dabble with it. And if you want to take advantage of some of the more robust features, you can do that. So, uh, and like I said, I Care Live is, is, is super comprehensive. And if you're really going to make a huge commitment to bringing on telemedicine for your office uh, and your team, that would probably be the route to go. Got it. Uh, before we keep going here, one thing I just want to say, I appreciate the questions, guys, but we probably won't be answering anything related to eye health or uh, product related stuff. So I apologize, we won't be touching on that because we really want to stick to um, how we can kind of continue to be productive and, and um, uh, you know, potentially continue making revenue during this time for business owners who are out of business. And Jody has a question here, which I think is, uh, is valuable. Uh, are you guys using e-commerce for glasses as a str strategic way to continue bringing in revenue during times like these? Um, well, Technically, as we are both uh, sublease practice owners, we are not doing any eyewear sales. But yeah. um, that was uh, my I'm, answer. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, also not. Um, uh, also not doing. Our, we are doing contact lens sales, but not through any e-commerce platform. We're just doing them through the traditional over the phone and that kind of thing uh, at this point. So. Thanks for the question, Jody. Uh, next question, or excuse me, next point um, out of the 15 things that we could be doing to stay productive. Number 10, revisit your business plan. I'm going to leave this all to you. Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I was able to, to work with actually the team at Luxottica for their iForward program. And it, it is a program that you go out to the schools and you have the opportunity to talk to students about um, more practice management and modes of practice. And, and one of the big things is the business plan. So evaluating your vision and mission statement and then just making things, sure things are on point. It is a living, breathing document, in my opinion. So it should change and evolve as your practice does. And any of us that look at our practice, you know, last year, three years ago, so, you know, everything changes over time. So it's super, super beneficial for us to go ahead and reevaluate those things utilize that plan as a roadmap for the practice. And like you said, I'm a man, I'm a man of lists and, uh, structure and all that stuff. And so I love these things. Um, yeah. I love having documents for protocols and missions and goals and just things that we can do to be more efficient and more effective. Yeah. How about you? What's a, yeah. Uh, Dr. Ryan court is a man with a plan. That's for sure. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I need to get better at this. Like I can't even, I don't think I have a whole lot more to say other than I need to get better at this. And that might be one thing I'm going to have to to focus on while we're here in this period where I don't have much else to do. Um, yeah, not, we, we drew up a, a business plan in the beginning and, and 
uh, I haven't really looked at it since. So definitely time to go back to it for sure. And honestly, that's okay. I'd say the vast majority of people probably don't. But if you look at the journey of life and the journey of your practice, it, it's almost like looking through old photos, right? When, when you're mm -hmm. looking at old photos, of your little one, when they came, you know, and, and they're born, and all of a sudden they're one, and all of a sudden they're, you know, three, four, five years old, things change. And so updating that information so you can have it accurate and then also driving forward a plan for the future, mm -hmm. like you're planning for your child's future uh, is important. So. Yeah, for sure. I think that's fantastic. First off, uh, hello, Aaron. Welcome. Um, and Lily says that their office does do glasses sales through e-commerce, but just non-prescription. So that, that's, a, that's a good thing. If you do retail glasses, not, non-prescription sun, blue blocking, whatever, stuff like that, that's super easy. I think that's a fantastic idea. Yeah, uh, totally. Okay, number 11, uh, develop a reputation management strategy. Yeah, so um, Google My Business, right? Yelp, Facebook, they all collect customer feedback, right? Patient feedback. And this is for any small business owner. And so utilizing, uh, if you don't have a strategy already in place to try to capture the positive and even the negative of what happens within your office, within your small business, you should, right? And so at our office, we have actually implemented a, a platform called Doctable. It, it integrates with our electronic health record system, which is Revolution text the patient the next day after their visit and ask them just to provide feedback on Google or Facebook. And it also has the ability for them to provide direct feedback to us if they're not exactly happy with their experience or they have just something they want to say that they don't want to put on the internet. I am huge on this because at the end of the day, we want to provide the best patient experience possible, the best care possible for mm -hmm. anybody that comes into our office. And this is kind of like a pulse of how are we doing, right? Mm -hmm. And so when anybody put, sends a message to us just directly, uh, it could be good or bad. We'll reply back and, and thank them for the feedback. And uh, if it's something that we could do better, I reach out and give them a phone call and, and try to work on that. If it's something that's put on the internet, I reply back to everything, whether mm -hmm. it's good or bad. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to do so because patients, customers, whoever it may be that's coming to your practice, your business are going to look into those things mm -hmm. and see how you manage those things, see how you respond to whatever it may be. And if it's something that's out of your control, maybe they didn't understand insurance co-pays or maybe they overlooked, the, you know, what's in your privacy policy um, or maybe it's just gross negligence, whatever it may be, you know, something that the patient just didn't truly understand, mm -hmm. you respond accordingly, right? And, mm -hmm. and you do it in a professional manner. But if it's something that you truly did where you messed up uh, or something in the office messed up, the front desk staff messed up, everybody's a part of your team, right? So if they were unhappy with how they agree at the front desk, you own it and say, we're going to do better. I'm so sorry about that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm really, really big on that. Doctable has been awesome for us and has helped us grow our, um, just the volume of reviews on Google and Facebook. And uh, that also helps drive search engine optimization and traffic for people coming to see. So new patients, new business. Yeah, absolutely. You? Do you guys utilize any platforms or any strategies? We, we, we do. We're on most of those big ones that you've listed. Um, I don't, I've never uh, heard of Doctable. Well, hadn't until I'd read your, um, your article. I think that's a fantastic. I don't know if it'll integrate with our e uh, EMR because you use a kind of an old basic one. But we're big on this. I'm big on this. Uh, huge on yeah. this. Like, I think it's so, so, so important um because that's what we do that's how we do everything i mean most of us right we google it and we see what the reviews are before we buy something <laughs> or we go somewhere i do it for everything it's upwards of 70 um, percent before they see a doctor right yeah uh, they so, read they read feedback about the doctor exactly it's so important and so what we don't have a specific uh program like doctable that we go through but i have a protocol with our staff that we will email literally every single patient the day or day or two after i can't remember exactly what our protocol is um after so they'll go you know today's wednesday they'll go back to monday's patients and they'll go through every single one and they'll email all of them we have a template but it'll say hello mr or mrs uh we'd like to you know thank you for coming in for your your appointment with dr so and so whoever they might have seen that day um you know we truly are grateful for you coming to see us but we'd love to hear your feedback and we give a link for facebook and we give a link for google for so it literally if you click the link it goes to the page where you just got to click five stars or whatever beautiful so, beautiful i mean and and, and, and it really, like you said, it is an invaluable thing. It really is super, yeah. super helpful with building a practice. So cool. Very important. Um, now, and again, you know, uh, to reiterate, uh, of course, Ryan and I are both optometrists, but I think the, the basis of this conversation is coming from us both being business owners and that reputation management is key for any business.
right? Oh, yeah. Any business, no matter what industry you're in. I hope everybody is is taking um, you know taking advantage of those uh, resources of of having good reviews online. Let me ask you a quick question. What was the last time you went to a restaurant and didn't look at the feedback provided on some kind of review platform? Never. I can't think of it. And my I mean, wife I mean not like, never, but I don't know. <laughs> my wife would go through and be like, eh, we ain't going there based on X, Y, and Z person's feedback. There's just too much negativity um, around this, this um, venue and vice, yep. you know, vice versa. Wow, people are just obsessed with it. It's hard to get a reservation. So it, it truly is. Honestly, and with things like with things like skip the dishes and, and and Uber Eats and stuff like that, if you are ordering in, like the first thing that you see is like eight out of ten or nine out of ten or whatever it is. Yeah. And if it's below eight out of ten, I'm probably gonna be like, you know what, I'll just look for the next one. I don't even read yeah, the reviews. I'll go to the fridge. <laughs> yeah, I'll go to the fridge. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, these days, these days, uh, I'm not even. But I'm just, you know, I think it's it's invaluable for sure. So. Yeah. Uh, that was number 11, develop reputation management strategy. Number 12 out of the 15 things that we could be doing to stay productive during this outbreak is explore consulting opportunities. And you are yeah. you're huge in this, so please. Um, and and I, I put a couple links uh, in the article, the companies like Coleman, uh, which I've done a few things with them where um, – they first reach out to me on LinkedIn and these are third party consulting groups that work with organizations that want to find out more information on a particular topic. And so all of us, obviously, you know, who are optometrists that are watching this, we have, you know, experience in healthcare and eye care, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of people out there that have experience in other facets of different businesses, different professions. And so they're looking for people with all sorts of skill sets and, and they may not reach out to you right now, but creating a profile on their specific platform and just having it up to date with your CV, with your skills. And then they, some of them actually have open consulting opportunities you can apply for. Um, a lot of them are phone call based. Uh, they pay, uh, you know, by the hour or by the, you know, whatever your rate may be. Mm -hmm. And it's just a good way to just kind of to diversify things. You know, I probably do a couple a year, nothing crazy. Yeah. But during this time, why not get yourself set up so that if there was an opportunity that you are that's already open, um, you could capitalize on it. If not, capitalize it down the road. So within the article, there are a link to a few different companies, and I highly recommend people check them out. 100%. I think that's – you know, I had never heard of those uh, those companies before. I feel like sometimes um, here in uh, Canada, maybe we have a little bit of limited access, I mean, or maybe perceived to have limited access to certain programs and, and companies like that. But – uh, I think that's fantastic. Consulting can be done from a distance, whether it's online, yeah. webinar, whatever, uh, or over the phone. So I think that's an important uh, thing to consider, not just for optometrists, again, for people in different different industries. One thing to note, though, too, is actually that all those companies have uh, global, you know, global presence. So right. um, I've actually one of the one of the ones I did do a, just a, a quick um, phone call with as well was based out of Europe. And mm. it was, um, yeah, it was, you know, something over in Europe. So Got it. definitely worth looking into for, you know, no matter what country you're in. Got it. Well, before we, uh, there's three more things that we're going to go through here. But before we go down the, the, to the last few things, because I think this is the last of the 15 that's more kind of business or like, um, you know, productivity in that sense kind of oriented. I just want to say, and I, I tend to go off in a little bit of, a, of a, a tangent or, or get a little heated when I do this. So I want to try and keep it cool. But guys, we are in a time where it's very easy to sit down and watch Netflix all day long. If you're not, some people are working from home and they got to do their nine to five, right? That's cool. So you keep doing that. That's great. But it's too easy to sit there and be like, I got a, I, I got all this free time. I don't know. I might clean the house and I might watch some TV. Please try to take advantage um, of this time that we have to grow whether it's personal growth, whether it's professional, and in particular here I'm talking about professional. So if you have an opportunity to plant some seeds, make some phone calls, send some emails, comment, or, you know, uh, contact people on LinkedIn, those things might not come to fruition right now during this outbreak while we're sitting at home, but a few months from now it might bring you something, some opportunities that you might not have had because you might not have had the opportunity or the time to plant those seeds when you're just busy at work nine to five. Now you have the time to do that. So that's it. I'm going to stop there. Just make sure you do it. All right. Harvey, that was beautifully said. And, yeah. and, and, and nothing in life comes for free. Nothing in life comes without hard work and effort. Um, you got to plant the seed. You got to water it. You got to, you know, you got to let yeah. it grow. Yeah. And so exactly what you said. That was beautiful. Thank you. Um, all right. Now we're going to move to the last three things on the list. 
And these my are my three favorite things. Yeah, three favorite things. Honestly, they're they're probably the most important. We we may have done this list in reverse. Um, but uh, number thirteen is be kind and optimistic. It's exactly what you just said in, in, in what you just said, right? Exactly yeah. what you said in, in a nutshell is there is so many things. There's so much activity online because we can't physically see people face to face. It is so much easier to be nasty or negative or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever it may be online contribute to just a snowball effect of just garbage. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. Yeah. It's not worth it. Don't do it. Interject kindness, right? Um, ignore it if it comes your way. But, you know, reaching out to others that, you know, maybe are struggling because we have a lot of colleagues, uh, a lot of people across this world right now are, are truly struggling, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, you know, we all feel it, you know, we're all stressed. If you can be that voice of, of reason and optimism and uh, interject some excitement and some hope for the future, you know, give them something to look forward to. Let yeah. them know you care about them. Those are just, it's such an important thing, especially during this time. Yeah. Yeah, so important. I, I don't know if I have a whole lot more to add, but, um, well, you know, probably the hardest thing as this thing wears on is going to be maintaining positivity um, in, in, you know, sanity, I guess. Um, so trying to be that person, if you can, the one that, that stops a, a chain of negative messages going on social media or you know, is the one that says something nice to the next person. It can be invaluable. You never know what kind of chain reaction you're starting uh, in of positivity. So I highly recommend it. Um, try to have that positive attitude. Try to be optimistic. You know, we're, we're going to get through this. It, it might take a while. We don't know exactly where we're going to end up. But if we, we look at it as um, we're going to be the best person that we can be throughout this and then we'll come out even better at the end, I think is, is really, really important. We are all in this together. We yeah. truly are. I mean, you know, look at our world right now. Everybody's experiencing this. Everybody's Literally, it's, it's, it's incredible. I don't know how we're going to look back on this time, you know, 20 years from now, 50 years from now. Um, but I'd like to look back on it and say that, uh, you know, I actually made use of it and, and helped others uh, hopefully to be better through it. Uh, we have Amen, a question before we, before we get to the last couple points here. Hey, my uh, wife joined. Hey, great. Hi. <laughs> Check All it right. in, Al. I love it. There you go. Um, Shaminder has a question. Will you guys be making any changes to your day-to-day -day based on uh, your adjustments after this virus is over, Ryan? To be determined. I mean, I fully anticipate going out in, and providing the care, the, you know, the experience, the, the everything we possibly could do, whether it's to our patients, to our team, to you know, my business partner, to my family, to my community. I, I would love to keep everything pre-COVID-19 the same. And maybe learn from this experience if, uh, you know, people are, you know, nervous about uh, whether there's germs or whether, you know, whether they're coming in contact or, you know, maybe we can put certain things up in, in our offices, like the slit lamp guard, mm -hmm. um, just little things to make people more at ease. Sure. Why mm -hmm. not? Absolutely. And I think a lot of businesses are going to probably think about some just little nuances and differences and changes. Um, but in regards to the way that we provide care and the service that we provide, uh, it's all systems go. and We have, the, you know, the green light to do so safely. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm, I'm approaching this question, the answer to this question, the, the way Shiminder intended, but I would expect everything will be a little bit different. Uh, but actually, almost I should say, I hope it will be different. And because when you're going through, we're going through this, uh, it, it, it really um, highlights the things that you're taking for granted, right? And so I hope when we come out of this, we'll take less of those things for granted and maybe appreciate more you know, without sounding too corny or cliche, but appreciate some of the smaller things. I'm talking sure. obviously in a more personal way um, and, and hopefully come out of this different and better. Uh, but when it comes to, to work, I do hope that we can just hit the ground running and go, you know, and, and, and try to go back to as much as we can as business as usual. But uh, with that other piece of a little more appreciation for life and, and all the, the things that we have around us uh, when we do get back to post COVID life. All right. Number 14 is practice self-care. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. I mean, it's pretty simple, right? Like yeah. we, we talked about being yeah. kind and optimistic. Uh, we got to do it to ourselves. So, sure. you know, at the end of the day, uh, exercising, mindfulness, uh, yoga, 
um, my, my, my two-year-old little girl loves yoga, right? Awesome. So I, I'll throw it on the, the TV and I'll start doing yoga and she'll be like, daddy, yoga. Yeah, she loves it. <laughs> That's my awesome. wife kind of laughs at me when I do meditation, but at the end of the day, meditation is something that truly helps kind of calm my nerves and, and ease my mind. And then For just sure. exercising. There are a ton of free resources right now that you can find on the internet because all these exercising facilities, they can't have people at them anymore, right? So they're mm -hmm. streaming things live for free. And so yeah. in my opinion, I think I've gotten more workouts in uh, consistently yeah. <laughs> since we've been shut down because yeah. I have the time, right? So 100%. you got you to gotta do it. You got to take care of ourselves. We got to keep ourselves mentally, uh, physically, emotionally, you know, in check. 100%. Sanjeet says it's all about finding an outlet or an escape. I think that's so, so, so Love important it. right now. Um, you know, uh, exercise I think is, is so valuable is, is invaluable. Um, meditation, I think maybe uh, is something that people are, um, a little nervous to kind of say, mention or, or say that they're, you know, or they don't know how to approach it. Um, sit down. I love it. Close yeah. your eyes <laughs> and just sit there and don't say anything to anybody for 15 or 20 minutes. That's it. So the, the Headspace app that I use yeah. is actually free for healthcare providers uh, when you provide an MPI for yeah. 2020. And it has awesome content. I also use the Calm app. Um, yeah. And I think that there's, uh, there's one other one out there. I think it's called 10% Happier, 10%. Yeah. It has also got a free trial for healthcare providers right now for an yeah. extended period of time. So why not? Yeah. Right? Why not go ahead and explore that? Yeah. And I think we'll go, going back to something we said before about the video calls and connecting with people, I think that's a way of self-care, a form of self-care too, because you, you want to make sure you're still connecting with people in a time when you feel kind of restricted. Um, so, so make sure you are calling people, video calling, and whatever you can do. Um, before we finish up on that last point, um, Meg has a question. Any advice you can give to optometry students during this time? You want to go first? Or you want me to jump in? Um, I'll sure. Yeah. I think a lot of the, the specifically the things that we just talked about just right now in the um, you know self care side of things, I think is so valuable and, and very very important. Students are stressed and uh, strung out and stretched so much during this time, and I know a lot of students had their board exams canceled or postponed. I know oh, that can I be very so stressful. Bad. Yeah. So just my only thing, the number one thing I'm going to say to you is just try to relax. Just don't worry. You'll get through it. Um, just take it easy. When things are, are kind of rolling back into their normal groove and you kind of work your way back into it, try not to overthink it. I know it's very easy to get stressed as a student. Um, that's all I'm going to say at this point. Yeah, I mean, and like I think you, I think you mentioned a really good idea, and it's really just connecting with people and taking care of yourself. So, um, yeah. you know, video calls with with your your classmates, with your family, um, and, and understanding that you are only a student for a a finite period of time. So, don't let something that is a pandemic that is impacting this entire world throw a, a wrench in your your experience as an optometry student. It should be an awesome experience. Yes, it is at times super stressful or um, you know, super exciting. I mean, there's, uh, there's definitely a lot of highs and lows, but you guys will all get through school. You'll all come out and you're all going to be excellent providers. You're going to be able to take care of people uh, and you're going to live, you know, awesome lives. So enjoy yep. being a student because you're only a student for a finite period of time. 100%. Uh, Advanced Eye Care Consultant says, stay positive, spread positivity. I think that's fantastic. Um, the last thing on the list, 15 Highlighted. things that we can do. I like an underline. It is, oh, that's right. It is underlined. Yeah, uh, it's the only one. I love it. It's the only <laughs> one. It is. Uh, yeah. 15 things that we can stay to, uh, things we can do to stay productive during this time. Number 15, spend time with your family. Um, I'm, Ryan, go ahead. My wife at 35, she's 35 weeks pregnant. So she's actually uh, on the call. Love you, Al. Um, she is is definitely my rock in this family she's fantastic and so anytime i can spend time with her and our two-year-old little one and then our little boy that's on the way um and just prepping for the changes that we're going to experience in our lives so getting his room ready uh getting my my daughter's next room ready so she's he's going to take over her room which is more of the nursery style and she's going to have her own big girl room and um you know navigating the uncertainty of the healthcare system that we're going to deliver in and all these things um, but just time is precious. It's the only asset in life that we can not get back. And it's just so very important 
that we embrace these moments where we can spend time with our direct family uh, uninterrupted time. Um, and I love you too, sweetie. And so, uh, That's you know, that is, huge. that is just super important. And yeah. um, I think we, we really can't take it lightly. hundred um, percent. That's beautiful. Congratulations again. Thank uh, you. Very excited. For I'm, you following, guys. I'm right behind you again. You know, I mean, you got, you What's got the age two difference? little ones. And, uh, so Amelia will be about two and a half when our yeah. little boy uh, comes in. And, yeah, yeah, it's so almost right exactly the same. That's I know, man. I know. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Got dark hair, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. I love it. Fantastic. Congratulations again. We love so, marketing. It's great. Yeah, yeah. I know, man. We just now we just have to meet in person. We have. Oh, we have. Oh my God. Maybe I have had too much to drink. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> I forgot about. I forgot. You know what, Scottsdale yeah. happened so quickly. Uh, anyway. Oh, that was so fast, man. Uh, we'll pretend like that didn't happen. Um, you know what? I, I can't say anything. But, you know, that's beautiful. And one of the things that for sure is a focus now for me while I'm home is to try to spend as much time as I can with uh, my wife and our daughters and try to be as involved as I can. Um, trying to balance that with still trying to create opportunities and work when I can, while I can during, during the day. But it's amazing. It's beautiful. And I encourage everybody to please try and do that as much as you can. I know work's very important. I know money is important. But if you have a family and you're living with your family, please try and spend more time with them. If you don't live with your family, um, contact your siblings and your parents and get on, on the video and, and everything else with them. And, uh, you know, share that. Share this time with them as much as you can. So what we were talking about today was Ryan Quartz, uh, Dr. Ryan Quartz, list of 15 things that we can stay, uh, things that we can do to stay productive during this outbreak. And the article is available to see, to read on LinkedIn, but um, I'll share it on, on my Instagram, uh, my, the link in my bio as well, Ryan, I assume you, you probably do the same. So please go out and check it out, read it and share it and let us know what you thought. Um, if you, if you watch this video, um, it will be living on my page for 24 hours. I'd love for you to take a screenshot and, and just tag us and let us know what you thought. We both love that. And uh, yeah. we would obviously would we'll, we'll love to stay engaged with everybody. Thank you so much for, for joining us for this call and sticking around for the full hour. I really appreciate it. Uh, Ryan, do you have any other last words before we finish up? Yeah. Um, feel free to comment on the article, other things, right? I mean, those are just 15 things that were kind of off the cuff and, and I did a little bit of uh, elaboration on, but there are a lot of things, unique ideas that I know that everybody kind of has and that they're doing differently and, and ways that they're creating value, staying productive, staying busy, because we don't know how long this is going to last, right? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we may start checking some things on our list and, and want to add more and, and there's nothing wrong with that, right? So just trying to stay uh, you know, active, engaged, insane. Um, yeah. That's really why I created the list. So that's thank fantastic. you so much for having me, by the way, Harbier. This was a blast. Thank Love doing you. these, man. And, and keep up the hustle, man. You are uh, you're the man. This, this <laughs> has been a lot of fun. Thanks, yeah. man. Uh, but you know what? Actually, just to quickly reiterate, I love that idea. Uh, if you can tag us and let us know what you are doing, if there's something different than this list of 15 things, tag us and let us know what you're doing. We'd love to share it with everybody else so we can all improve and, and get through this all together. absolutely i would love love to, to hear what everybody's doing so thank you thank you guys so much guys me. everybody have a great night have a drink take it easy happy friday <laughs> see you later all right bye guys bye